cards. This is the point right now where we take off our shirts. <laughs> Let's go, baby. Whether you're dating, whether it's business, sales is everything. Uh -huh. And what they say is like, people don't buy product, they buy people. People like doing business with people that they love. But I remember a buddy of mine, I won't say his name, but an absolute buffoon of an idiot showed me his commission check for $75,000. I said, what? I said, your dumb ass made 75 grand? I'm not on team blue, I'm not on team red, I'm on team red, white, and blue. Used to just, it was three options back in the day, ABC, NBC, CBS, there it was. Now, these types of conversations, you can go find common sense. You don't have to just eat what they tell you to eat. Yeah. So my guest today on the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel is Mr. Hashtag Save That Money, Adam Saucy in the house, host of Sauce Talks Money, of course on Valuetainment Money, and of course Patrick's right hand co-host on the PBD Podcast, Adam Sostic. Welcome to the show, bro. Woo! Come on. In my old office. <laughs> Like, the, how the tables have turned. When you used to come visit from Chicago, yeah. you were like, hey, do you mind if I use the set? When sure. I, went, I was like, of course, whatever. Yeah. Here you're, you're here now in Dallas. I'm That's back right. in Florida visiting. Full circle, that, baby. That, that, that blackboard. Oh, I, dude, I just, I just saw Adam just having, like, you know, anxiety attacks with that blackboard. You know, I, I, I get it now because, obviously, you're a Marine. Like, that's a major part of your identity. Pat, the Army. You know, it was just Veterans Day. The whole thing, PTSD is a real thing. <laughs> yeah. I've never yeah. had PTSD until I walked in here and I saw this blackboard <laughs> where I used to do episodes where Saws Talks Money. I was like, oh, my God. Go. But anyway, we're good. I'm Should. happy to be here, brother. Bro, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm glad you're here. You just came back from the NALBA conference. Exactly. Can you tell everybody what the NALBA conference so is? So NALBA is, if you're in the insurance world, mm -hmm. you're familiar with NALBA, especially yep. in the brokerage world. Yep. Uh, it's the National Association of Independent Life Brokerage association yeah. i think there's two associations that they're in matter whatever yeah. it is but it's a big deal yeah and uh i've i've been going to these meetings for 17 years 15 17 years somewhere in that that's how i kind of made my name in the insurance business and yeah. what i do is life settlements but the reason that like we're talking full circle and yeah. why we're doing this is 10 years ago to the day to the week is where i met pbd really? working out in the gym at nalba at this conference here yeah. And it, it's always I, held in Dallas. It's it's either in Dallas uh -huh. or in South Florida. Wow! So it, it interchanges yeah. each year, and uh, I think I actually met Pat in Orlando. I want to say so it, it it goes from Florida to Dallas. But I met Pat in the gym. This was in 2012, right? When we're filming this interview, it's 2022, mm -hmm. and um, 10 years. Wow! And I just met Pat in the gym. He had just started PHP in what 09, 09 I want to say. Right. Yep. So he had just been that. going for two three years at that point. And I'll never forget the conversation that we had because we were smoking in the gym and he's, you know, he's a big workout guy. He yeah. showed me how to do workouts. And yeah. when I used to play football, you know, I had to, you know, we get it. We're working out. But I was like, so tell me about your business model. And what he explained, which looking back at it was his blue ocean strategy for sure, is he was basically doing things completely different from what every other member of Nalba was doing. So I kind of joke about, the NALBA and the insurance crowd yeah. being MPS, male, pale, and stale, <laughs> right? Okay. So shout out to my white people out there. Are you cool, you know? Um, but what he was doing was he's like, I want young, vibrant, Latina, yeah. female, social media who have never been even experienced in the insurance. In the insurance. Like, yeah. I want people without a license. I want to train them. I want green and for me, hearing this for the first time, knowing that literally of the 1,000 people I was already dealing with yeah. were kind of like cannibalizing the same people, Go from you know, their business shop, model, IMO, shop IMO, to shop, yep. points, you know, yeah. all those, those whole deals. Uh, and hearing his business model, I was like, damn, like, good yeah. luck with that, bro. Like, yeah, yeah. And then I would, I, I, every year I would see Pat at the same meeting, Nalba. Shout out to my Nalba folks out there. And every year I saw it start, but first year he was by himself, right? We're just two dudes in a gym. The next time he's with Amor, who was his okay. chief compliance. Right. Then he's rolling with the Tom. biz doc, Tom, Tom right? Yep. So now it's 2012, 2013, 2014. By the time 2015, 2016 rolls around, there's like an entourage following Pat. Really? And I've just known Pat from the gym, like we're not even <laughs> doing business. We're, I'm just, you know, we're in touch. One of the attendees at the, at the one of the attendees, yep. just like, and now I'm like, oh, what's up? Let me go say what's up to Pat. Someone goes, hey, bro, you're gonna have to wait your turn. Kind of a thing. I said, <laughs> oh, so I said, what? 
And then Pat sees me. He's like, no, no, that's Adam. Cool, 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 cool. And I'm like, what the is going on right now? He's like, yo, yo, we're, we're doing things. We're doing yeah. things. The next year I see him, I didn't even know about valuetainment. Wow. So now it's about 2016. I start to kind of get, I'm dabbling in the social media world. Mm -hmm. And I was like, bro, you didn't even tell me about valuetainment. Like, what is this? Yeah. And I was like, I kind of want to start something. And he was like, listen, whatever you do, just do it on camera. Don't do like, at this point, podcasts, everybody knows podcasts are mm -hmm. kind of like what we do now. We're just yep. chopping it up, but it wasn't video based. It's more audio based. And he's like, just do something on camera. I was like, aye, aye, Captain. That was 2016. Fast forward a few years after that. By 2019, him and yeah. I are talking about, uh -huh. you know, joining Valuetainment. Yeah. Yep. And then 2020, I moved to Dallas to this right, office right, right, right here yep. to start filming content. So it's yep. I, I, it's one of those things where, I mean, what's the, the message here? It's you never know what the long game will do. Play the long game. Don't look at, try to get a quick buck. Yep. You know, I didn't do any business with Pat whatsoever. And for me, uh, you know, your network is your net worth. Yeah. Like 100%. Like. If, if people ask me at this point, like, yo, Adam, like, what do you do? Who are you? I would be like, I, alt, before I would say is like, well, I'm a money guy. I'm an insurance investment guy. I'm like, I do social media. I, yeah. I've been in nightlife, South Beach. It's like, yeah. above all, what I yeah. do better than anything is networking. <laughs> and I just, because I'm a people person, yeah. I enjoy yeah. interacting. Yeah. I don't collect the material best. things. I like, yeah. I collect friends. Yeah. That's what I do. Yeah. So shout out to PBD. Thank yeah. you for... Uh, Having this happen for sure, for sure. Uh, let me let me go back into your, your your entrance into the insurance business. So, okay, so we just learned that uh, you're from you have family from the D from yeah, Detroit, from Detroit. But you spent a good large part of your your teenage and, and upbringing in in South Florida. Born and raised in Miami. My dad's okay. from Detroit. I would go to Detroit and oh, back and forth Minnesota every summer. Gotcha. Basically, my family's like, get the hell out of here. You're annoying. <laughs> you know, you're a wild kid. Like, go be with your aunts, uncles, grandma. But born and raised in Miami. Correct. Okay. And so uh, went to went to university, Florida State. Oh, Flor oh Florida so, State. So you're uh, Se you're, you're, seminal, but I, I, deep, deep, deep down, I'm a Miami oh, Hurricane. Oh, 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 oh. That's I mean, awesome, we, bro. The we might have just got canceled right now these days doing that. It's so crazy to even right. say that, bro. That's when I saw um, Charlie Ward. Yeah, I was coming up. Charlie, Charlie Ward's Ward playing there, and obviously, of course, we just interviewed him earlier this year. But Dion, Neon Dion was out there, prime time. Prime time. But to see, you know, uh, Florida State back then, and then and then Miami, and then Notre Dame, and then USC, all yes. these guys, and and then West Virginia, Michigan. I mean, these these guys are always uh, always a mix of, of in, in college football. Now but, it's all about Alabama, but the Bama. thank God that they're. I think they lo they have two losses now. <laughs> I, I always say this, not to get all political. Um, Alabama is to college football what Trump is to politics, like. You're either rooting for Alabama or you're rooting for any Everybody team so. playing Alabama. <laughs> so, like, people always wonder, like, how the hell did Trump lose? It's like, whatever team was playing Alabama, mm -hmm. you are now an LSU Tiger fan. That's right. You are now a Georgia Bulldog fan. Yeah. You are now a Michigan yeah. Wolverine fan. Yeah. Like, that's what Alabama does to sports, uh -huh. just like the Yankees do to baseball. Uh -huh. Right or like Golden State Warriors do or New England Patriots, yep. that's Trump. Gotcha. So you're either on Team Trump, Team Bama, yeah. or you're totally against it. For sure. So uh, uh, anyway, one of my questions. I want I want to pin that yes. because we're going to go back to that because of, uh, of obviously we're going to go back to some political uh, thoughts and views on, on your end. But uh, why did you get involved in the insurance industry? I got involved in the insurance industry. Um, it wasn't even so much I wanted to do insurance. It was. I graduated college and I had no clear direction as to what I wanted to do. Um, I, my first job out of college, I worked for Clear Channel Radio, which is now oh, yeah. iHeartMedia. And what they told me is, if you could sell air, you could sell anything. <laughs> and I was selling airtime. Yeah. And my aunt, who was very successful and is sort of a mentor to me, um, she would tell me, like, you know, if you're not going to be a lawyer, Doctor, you know, traditional money making mm. career, you got to get into sales. So I'd always had wow. this like, all right, I got to get into sales type of thing. Fil Filipinos is you got to be in, in healthcare. Really? Yeah. Fili Filipinos. You wow, be a doctor, that's why there's so dentist. many Filipinos in the. Yeah. In the 
Wow. And plus, a lot of the colleges recruit from the Philippines based on the Vietnam War. Because all the nur American nurses went, left for Vietnam, which created a drain in American healthcare system, so they went to the Philippines to recruit them in exchange for citizenship. Interesting. Yeah, since my, my, my mom got here. Ah. Yeah, so, but they, I guess, for, so, but, so Jewish heritage, yes. that's, that's the conversation. Doctor, lawyer, get into sales, right? And, and, and you're, whether you're dating, whether it's business, whether it's you're starting a, a new company, yeah. like sales is everything. Uh -huh. yeah. Sales solves everything. Yeah. So it's, you're always constantly selling yourself, you know, and, and what they say is like, people don't buy, pe people don't buy product, they buy people. People yeah. like doing business with people that they like. Yeah. And um, so back to how I got into insurance, I was, I was what I call a jack of all trades, master of none, right? We've yeah. all heard that before. I was doing radio sales, I was doing stand-up comedy, I was doing nightlife, I was doing hospitality, I was trying to be a sports agent, just jack of all trades, doing all these things, yeah. making no money whatsoever. And then I'll never forget the moment, it was like everyone has an aha moment. Mm -hmm. I remember this was 06, and the real estate was really rising, we all know what happened in 08, the Great Recession and all that. But I remember a buddy of mine, I won't say his name, but an absolute buffoon of an idiot <laughs> showed me his commission check for $75,000 doing real estate. I said, what? I said, your dumb ass made 75 grand on one deal? And I was like, that's it, I'm out. I gotta find something what, different. What were you making at that time? Dude, I made, the most I had ever made before I got into insurance was 25 grand in a year. Sheesh. And it's not like I was growing up in the 1920s. This is yeah. in 2005, right? Right, right? So I was, but money wasn't my focus. I was more just like, I knew that when I applied myself, you know, mm -hmm. if you apply yourself and you have conviction and tenacity mm -hmm. and you figure what I call like stick to itness and just figure shit out, yeah. you'll figure it out. Yeah. But if you're just kind of like, ah, I don't know, going through the motions, which I was doing, you can do that for years and just kind of lose, lose years of your life. Um, but when I saw this dude, make this money, it triggered a, if this guy's doing it, I could do something. And I got a job, I had to move out of Miami, I moved up to Boca, you know Boca. Yeah, of course. Uh, an hour north of Miami, I got a job as a cold caller for a startup financial firm, wow. just like, and they told me up front, it's gonna take you a year, but if you stick it out, you'll start to make some real money. Did you, did you have to get licensed? To, I got licensed, okay. I got my life license, yep. my life insurance license, sure. all that, the whatever the, Whatever, I forgot Pardon what it's right. called, whatever yeah. it's, like, like a two -third, whatever two, number, two, two, like it's, it's a whatever license, number yeah. it is, two I got it, license, I yeah. passed, and uh, it took me a year, my first year, shout out to all the salespeople out there, you know how hard it is, Matt, my first year combined, I made $5,000 yeah, in a year. You're not going to have to park, bro. <laughs> Killing it, right? So people are like, oh, you made it a month, no, in a year. So I was living in a buddy's like couch and I was paying him whatever peanuts, and I would just, whatever, I was just figuring it out. And finally, my second year, it popped, right? After smiling and dialing, I mean, I watched Boiler Room, I watched Wall Street. The best. Wolf of Wall, yes. I'm just learning the yes, game, sir. you know? Glenn I was Gary, using Glenn Ross, you like that All one? that. Yeah. Glenn Gary, again, Ross, Coffee for Closers, 100%. <laughs> <Sick eyes. laughs> That's right, second place. <laughs> And uh, my second year, I made a hundred grand, and I saw. I was like, "Oh my God, this is a thing! I can do this!" And then that was 2006, 2007, 2008, recession. And we all know what happened in, in the insurance space, financial space. A lot of people lost funding, mm -hmm. and then it was two years of eating shit again, making whatever I was making. Yeah. But at that point, you know, my whole mantra yeah. slogan is save that money. Yeah. I saw what was happening in 08, where guys who were making a half a million, yeah. million bucks a year, yeah. went down to like losing their job. Mm -hmm. We were getting funding from Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns and Credit Suisse, yeah. like major, major financial institutions. I saw guys losing jobs. I saw guys that were driving, you know, $200,000 yeah. cars, selling their car, now driving just a, yeah. you know, a normal whatever, mm -hmm. you know, BMW, whatever it was. And I was like, okay, got it. Like, just because you make amount of the certain amount of money doesn't mean you need to ball out. Kind of got that. And then, you know, and then I just doubled down on what I was doing. And guys, and more, more sales advice, the guys that would tell me 10, 15 years ago, 
hey, thanks, but no thanks, not interested, lose my number. Now I'm doing 10, 20 million dollar deals with these guys at Nalba, right? And then I, my income went, you know, two, right. three, five beyond. And, um, but that's the life of a sales guy is that kind of have to eat shit at first. You know this, Matt. Yeah, yeah. And then there's light at the end, at the end of the tunnel if you're willing to pay the price. But you're selling in, in an industry that when times are tough, people want that product. Correct. Not, not when times are tough, people get rid of that product. Yeah, but, you know, my, you sell life insurance. Mm -hmm. PHP is one of the biggest life insur insurance wholesalers, distributors mm -hmm. in the country, in the world. I'm selling, I'm buying life insurance off people. So what right. I do is life, life settlements. settlements. Yeah. So it's like, oh, you don't want your life insurance anymore? Yeah. I'll buy it off you for cash. Kind of like a structured settlement right. or reverse mortgage. So we, we need capital, we need cash. So when 2008, all the capital, the, mm -hmm. the credit freeze dried up, we had, nothing we had no capital. Yeah. So we lost our funding. So we were skinny down. Got it. So it wasn't yeah. like we were out there selling product. Got it, got it, so, makes sense. But also, you know, this time around in 2020, everyone was getting stimulus checks, people, yeah. you know, th this was like more of a health situation where it's like, I could die, COVID. Mm -hmm. It kind of like yeah. triggered those emotions where you yeah. saw more sales. Yeah. 2008, I don't think it had that same effect yeah. because it, it was just like, Everyone lost their jobs. There was no money uh -huh. in the marketplace. Yeah. And there wasn't this, you know, it wasn't a pandemic. Mm -hmm. So it didn't trigger those like fight or flight emotions, right? Mm -hmm. Like you were, you were selling insurance in 08. There must have been a different yeah. mindset in 08 versus 20, no? Of course, from, I mean. From I, people out there, from yeah. consumers. Yeah, well, people are buying insurance in 08, 09 because of the safety of it. Mm. Because they were losing their shirts on 401ks, losing shirts on and whatever they had their money Got in. Got it, they, safety they, component. Safety and certainty in the insurance, and index annuities, index universal life. IUL kind of just became a big thing at that point. Correct, yeah, because right. they'd been around for 10 years, 10 plus years. 2020, people are buying insurance, not necessarily annuities, people are buying insurance because of COVID. Because Correct. Of, of fear you that, never know. Yeah, I might die. I could die. And we have a little bit of fra a flash crash in, in March of, of that year. But uh, you know, by, to your point though, last 14 years, nobody's experienced a crash. I mean, it's been good times, good times, good times, good times. And so you're on the pulse of this. You're on the PBD podcast. You're, on, you're doing value entertainment money. Uh, you guys are talking about this all the time. Um, is there a segment of our population that, ah, you know, it's, it's okay. It's going to be good. It's going to be fine. Versus I'm like, hey, Kiyosaki, we're in going to be the worst crash ever <laughs> in the history of the United States of America. Buy yeah. gold, buy, buy Bitcoin, buy all this stuff. Don't put your money in cash. Where, where, where are you finding yourself? As, as you process right, all Right, there's kind of like the doomsday preppers Correct. out there. We're all going to die. Yeah. This is going to be the worst thing ever. All my protectors, you know, it's that, sure. that camp. Um, we recently interviewed a guy. He passed away. It was crazy. This guy, Peter Pry, EPMDs, electromagnetic pulse. How, like, you know, we're seeing yeah. what's going on with, you know, nu potential nuclear talk, whatever, end of the world. And then there's the, you know, ostrich mentality where it's like, no, it's all good. There's nothing uh -huh. to see here. <laughs> you know, I think where I'm at on this is that, you know, there, it's a great um, kind of metaphor is like, it's like a Venn diagram where it's like things that matter mm -hmm. and things that you can control where you need to focus is where those two things intersect, right? There's things that matter, yep. right? Nuclear war matters, mm -hmm. but yeah. can you control that? Yeah. A recession matters, mm -hmm. right? Inflation matters, you know, the, the Fed raising interest rates matters, but you have no control over that, yeah. right? For the most part. Yeah. So where you have to kind of focus is, all right, things that matter, what can you control? Where do those two things intersect? So when it comes to personal finance, it's like, hey, I don't wanna be broke. Yeah. Hey, I wanna have money. I can control how much I'm saving in my paycheck. Yeah. I can, can save how much I'm contributing to my retirement accounts. Yeah. I can control buying life insurance. Yeah. I can control who I network with. Yeah. So what I try to do is just focus on things that I can control. Because there's always gonna be people saying, Kiyosaki's been saying that he's gonna expect the worst crash ever yeah. for 10 years now. <laughs> it's like Robert. He wrote a book, The Next Prophecy. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, because there's money in that, right? Um, there's money in, and I respect Robert. Like I'm not, I'm not talking trash about him, mm -hmm. and he might be right and he might be wrong, but 
you know, fear is a great motivator. Yep. Yep. So yep. I hope that we don't have a stupid, crazy, horrible recession yeah. on behalf of America. But if you position yourself correctly, yep. there's a lot of buying opportunities there. You know, right? What's pretty interesting about our economy is that uh, since the 40s, uh, recessions haven't came to America. We've created global. So everybody kind of figures out what America is doing. We have a recession, then the rest of the world has a recession. We haven't imported one. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, so because Greece has, had, oh, now America has faced it. You know, you know uh, uh, Australia yes. has a recession. Now we have one. In Europe, UK has a recession. So now we're going to have the Euro European yeah. Union has a recession. So now America, we've never had that since the 1940s. The, uh, th this reminds me of a saying, I could butcher this, I could be spot on, but it's yeah. like, America sneezes, the rest of the world has a cold. <laughs> You're right, 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 correct. Good one. Something like that. Good one. Like, America has a cold, the rest of the world has a flu. <laughs> like, if, yeah. this is something that I, like, this is what I discovered on the PBD podcast. It's like, inflation's out of control. It's yeah. 7, 8 percent. It's out of control. Consumer price index, it's crazy here. America, cost of goods, everything. It's like, okay, yeah, yeah it does suck. Yeah. But have you seen what's going on in the rest of the world? Real? Yep. yep. They're yeah. double-digit inflation. Yep. You know, it, uh, currencies are crumbling. Yeah. So it's like as bad as it, it gets in America, yep. the rest of the world so, is even worse. Other than China, who knows what, what to make of those veter numbers. On Veterans Day, I'm going to show you this picture in a second. On Veterans yeah. Day, we're at the Cowboys Club because you know, I'm, I'm in Dallas now, so I'm hanging out at the Cowboys One Club. Right? In, <laughs> yeah, excuse, yeah. Me, excuse me. And so behind us is the Dallas Cowboys practice field. Sick. To the right of us is Jerry Jones' office. Right? Sick. Um, um, Mike Martz is having a beer at the bar. Right, so we just talk about entrepreneurship and just you know lighting up cigars, our favorite thing to do. Next, you know the guy we're having we're having a conversation with. He goes, "Yeah, I'm Cuban, and I was raised in Russia." <laughs> I'm Cuban, I was, and he's black. Uh, what? Yeah, so here, so here's a picture. We'll show everybody in the audience all the way on the left. Right? Yeah, I'm Cuban. He's Cuban, raised in Russia, but bro, why are you in Dallas? Yeah, he says this is the best place in the world. For somebody to make a name for themselves and make some money. Wow, sick. So he's been he so he's seen communism. Yes. He's seen socialism. He's seen the worst you know, economic systems in America. But 100%. he's in America and he's in in a, in a red state. So uh, I've seen you grow from a political standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, because I remember when you first came on the PBD podcast, you're like you're left, liberal left, and, and people are calling that out on, on the on, on the. You're PBD a socialist. Podcast. You're yeah, a yeah. communist. <laughs> uh, I'm like okay, but yeah. like last week during the post election um, podcast, you, you even voted for DeSantis. Yeah, hundred percent. So you said, listen, I, I may be in I may have been left. Yes. When I first started this thing, but I've grown because you associated yourself with the right conversation. Even though you're not right, you're not, you haven't flipped a Republican. No, I'm definitely but, not a conservative. But you're in the, you, you now find I'm yourself a moderate. in the middle. I'm a moderate, 100%. Interesting word, you're a moderate. Yes. Yeah. But, but I realized that, so anyway, is that what you're asking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. like where do I stand now? Correct, or, yeah, yeah. I, I think I've realized that I'm a, just a moderate person in general. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. I don't drink too much, but I'll have a couple beers, Yeah. right? Like, I don't party too much, but I'll party. <laughs> like, you know, I, were you like that, though, younger? I mean, did you, like, get slosh slammed? Yeah, I think, I mean, in college, who didn't? But, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but I've always been, like, work hard, play hard. Yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah. get your shit done, yeah. and then kind of enjoy the fruits of your labor. No yeah, doubt. Yeah. Um, but as far as, like, political ideology, like, everyone gets their ideology, whether it's religion, whether yeah. it's politics, whether it's morals, principles. A lot of it comes from where? Your family. Mm -hmm. So in my household, JFK was the man. Yeah. Like my dad was a JFK guy. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Grew up in Detroit, yeah. JFK, mm -hmm. like, you know, yeah. racial relations, Detroit, black, yeah. white, Jewish, blah, blah. You know, my dad would always tell me as a kid, there were signs up in Detroit. This is in the 50s. It was no blacks, no Jews, no dogs. Damn. I was like, damn. That's a thing. So, so blacks, Jews, and dogs are all in the same. Apparently, like okay. So in Detroit. In Detroit. Wow. It's insane. And he told me that. So he's like, "We're Democrats. JFK's the man." I said, "Dope." Um, I guess so. Uh, and then I like Clinton. Clinton was swaggy as hell, <laughs> right? I was, you know. I did not have. Yeah, I did not wear Liz Lewinsky, <laughs> right? <laughs> And uh, so I was a Clinton guy. And then, you know, I, I went to Florida State, which is in Tallahassee, Florida. Yeah. 
which is the capital of Florida. I was in school at 2000. I was an intern at the um, Capitol building, the Capitol. I was an intern, 20 years old. This was right around the time of the election, okay. year 2000, yeah. Gore versus Bush. Bush yeah. I had voted for Jeb Bush, uh, who was the governor of Florida. Did you yeah. know that? George yeah. W. Bush's uh, uh, brother uh, is Jeb Bush. He yeah. was the governor of Florida at the time of the 2000. Against Gore. Against Gore. Gore. So when it was like election season, and I didn't really have strong political ideology other than the fact that my dad was like, we're JFK Democrats type of thing. But I was intern at the Capitol building. Jeb Bush was my boss. He's the governor. Yeah. I had voted for Jeb, but I also voted for Gore because I was a Clinton guy. I was confused, <laughs> right? And uh, I saw all this play out yeah. in, in front of my eyes because remember, it came down to Florida. I mean, just if people don't remember mm -hmm. how divisive yeah. things were oh, yeah. in 2000, yeah, for sure. these, these chads on these ballots, mm -hmm. remember this term? Mm -hmm. These hanging chads, because you'd punch the ballot. I don't know, this was a whole thing. And I was in the middle of it. I'm like, this is insane. So I saw this happen, and then we saw what happened with 9-11. America yeah. was unified. That's yeah. the last president we've had in this country to uh, yeah. receive um, yeah. approval ratings up north of 60%, George W. Bush. I think it was in 70%. These days, you're lucky if you get 49% mm -hmm. in America mm -hmm. today, mm -hmm. right? You know, Trump never hit 50% approval ratings, never. Yeah. Biden had it at the beginning, that's pummeled. Yeah, yeah. So what am I getting at is that I saw what Bush happened to Bush, sky high approval ratings. By the time he left office, his approval ratings were in the 30s. Great recession, yeah. you know, the war in Afghanistan, Iraq, everything a mess. And then Obama shows up. And, and do you think most people vote because of personality or for policies? Most people. Uh, a, a personality. 100%. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Obama shows up, swagged yeah, yeah, out, yeah, yeah, black yeah. dude, cool yeah. as hell, versus old ass John McCain running on the Republican <laughs> ticket after George W. Bush just had approval ratings in the yeah. 30s. Yeah. Of course America's going to vote for the cool no, new black guy. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Sign me up. Let's make history. Let's make history, baby. Yeah. Change, amazing. Yeah. I think. I remember that I was. I was in yeah. Chicago at that time. I was. You very saw what was going on. I saw it was a victory party in Millennium so, Park. I was right there. So, you know, back to your initial question of like, why are you liberal and why are you more of a moderate? Why do you have more, you know, right-leaning tendencies now? Is because since Obama, since Trump, the left has gone super so far left, left yep. and then certain factions of the right have gone yeah. super far right. Yeah. Like, look at January 6th. Sure. I mean, just as an example, the Proud Boys, the MAGA guys, mm -hmm. respect, don't come at me. Um, so here you are, it's like a man without a home. And my, I think, center of gravity has always been, because I was a former comedian, I've always liked Bill Maher. I've always liked Joe Rogan. I used to kick it with Joe Rogan at the Aspen Comedy Festival in 2004 when I was doing comedy, pre-politics. And if, if you look at Bill Maher today, he says, I haven't changed, the left has changed, yeah. right? Yeah. Joe even Rogan. He, even he's starting to uh, change his tune a lot 100%. of things right now. Yeah. I mean, he's not, a, he's, he'll call no. out Fox and oh, call sure. out Trump yeah. as much as anyone, but he'll also call out the woke left. He's, com he's calling out common sense. Common yeah, sense. That's it. And even Joe Rogan, you know, three, four, five years ago, he, he, I, he was a Bernie supporter, yeah. straight up. Do you think Rogan is viewed no. as a left Democrat now? Yeah, no. He's a he said vote, right vote, winger he, at he this said point. Vote Republican, that's what he said. Yeah. So we're going. So what am I giving? I'm giving this like sort of histronomics here of what's happened and where people start and where they kind of end up. I think what America is yearning for is, is common sense, and I've seen common sense over the last few years embodied in Ron DeSantis in Florida. Now, now he still has to prove himself mm -hmm. on the national stage. I don't fanboy over politicians mm -hmm. like that. I'm not like, mm -hmm. that's my guy. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's clear that the, the Biden-Kamala agenda is not doing great. No, not it's clear that the country yeah. is like, thanks, Trump, for your service, yeah. but like we need something new. Yeah. Everyone that he em embraced, yeah. every single governor lost, every yeah. election denier lost. Carrie, Light, Larry, Carrie Lake in yeah. Arizona, she was supposed Horrendous. to be the next yeah. thing. She lost. Yeah. 
America's just like, can we just get back to normalcy, yeah. decency, and common sense and just to kind of put a button on this, bro? I'm not on team blue. I'm not on team red. Mm. I'm on team red, white, and blue. And I want whoever there the next go. president to be, yeah. brother, yeah. get to that 60% approval rating. This race to the bottom where you can win at 48, 49, mm -hmm. 50%, Mm -hmm. where not even half of America is even voting for you, I think is a losing proposition for America as a whole. Yep. Whoever it is, whether it's a Nikki Haley, whether it's a DeSanto, whoever it is, if they can get to America where that's like 60%, it's not a big ask. Yep. I'm not asking for 80%. I'm not asking yep. for 90%. 60% yep. where six out of the 10 Americans are like, I'm cool with that guy. Yep. I would love to see that, whoever well, it is. What, what my, one of my most inspirational quotes when I, was, when I was started to read when I was and listening to the Marine Corps was don't ask what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. JFK. Which made me proud to serve in the Marines. Yes, that which was, is, that which was is, a Democrat. To the Democrat message. And he would be a, a, a sort of a moderate yeah. Republican at this point. Correct, because why? When you, when you move the goalposts, yep. when you pull up the anchor of what your values and principles are all about to try to accommodate, 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 you end up moving in that direction versus staying anchored in common sense. Yes. And that common sense will be anchored based on your values, principles, and what you, what you stand for. But if, it, if there's no anchor, and you're like a ship without a rudder, or you're a ship in the middle of an ocean, you're, just, you're drifting, you're just getting pushed wherever the storm takes you, you know, that's, that's what happens when, when, uh, when you're not using canvas, you're not anchored, you're not yeah. grounded. And so- and you, you know what's awesome is that that's what's so important about conversations like this. Yeah. It's so what, what's so important about conversations that we have on PBD podcast, yeah. so important what we do on Valuetainment, what Rogan's doing, because we've disrupted the mainstream media. Just how like Bitcoin disrupted the monetary system, mm -hmm. or Trump, or, you know, or certain, or Bernie disrupted mm -hmm. politics. Used to just, it was three options back in the day, ABC, NBC, CBS, there it was. Yeah. Now these types of conversations, you can go find common sense. You don't have to just eat what they tell you to eat. Yeah. And, and that's where someone listening might say, you know what? I was always been a Democrat, but I don't know what Matt just told me makes complete sense. Yeah. Hey, I've always been a hardcore Republican, but I don't know what Adam just told me about 60% approval ratings kind of makes sense. You'll find common sense in conversations like this, yeah. not in ideologues in mainstream media. Now, I, was, I was shipped into a conversation you've been having. You've been having some sick conversations uh, as, of, as of recently, like ma massive ones. Um, you flew to Madrid. Yes. Right? And uh, this guy, instead of being on mainstream media, he's tearing up social media. Yeah. He was the number one most searched name on Google, more than Donald Trump, if you can believe that. And he got canceled, he got shut down. You guys had a five-hour conversation with Andrew Tate. Tate, yeah. Right? And so um, his, his thing is people misunderstand me because of the short clips. Of course. 30 seconds here, 60 seconds here, da 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 um, you, you spent some time with him. Oh, eight much, hours, much, like yeah, this. Yeah, we're yeah. doing this for an hour. <laughs> Imagine this for eight hours. This is the point right now where we take off our shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, baby. Just, so uh, how'd you process that conversation? What was your biggest takeaway you know, from, so, from tape? Uh, let me just address his meteoric rise to fame. Crazy. And then I'll kind of explain. So just to kind of back up, in March of 2022, mm -hmm. so I've always done money content, money content. Pat told me, at the turn of the year, 2021, 22, Adam, you got to reinvent yourself. You got to do something different. You're born and raised in South Beach. You've been in the nightlife business. You've got a bar in South Beach. You have networked with all sorts of celebrities. You were in the Kardashian wedding with Chris Humphreys. Like, you know that world. Why don't you start talking more about dating, relationships, you know, masculinity, femininity, all these types yeah. of conversations. He had asked me to do that the year prior. I'm like, no, man, Pat, I'm sticking the money, bro. Finally, I'm like, all right, Pat, right as always. So I start, I go from Saz Talks Money to Sazcast, which is more of just, you know, it's me yeah, kind of yeah. talking when I'm talking about rather You're than so just money. You're so good at you. You're good blend. You're so good at yeah, it. Yeah, it just, it's, it's where finance meets romance, kind of when they're sacked, kind of like what I talked about, yeah. like, you know, things that matter, things you control, kind of finding that middle ground. So in March of 2022, I tell Pat, hey, bro, so there's this guy called Andrew Tate. I think I'm going to have him on my show, I'm gonna to try to get him on my show. He goes, great, I think you should do that. I think that'll be good luck for you. <laughs> so, right on, Pat, let me go try to do that. Just to give you some context, that's in March of 2022, Pat's okay. encouraging okay. me to have 
Tate on my show. Okay. Meaning, no, I'm not going to have him on my show, Pat. Have him on your show, Adam. Done. Six months later, we are flying to Madrid to go interview Tate for Pat's show. Pat has not left the studio for an interview in two years. Everything's in the studio. Right, right. So just to put some context, how you can go from like relatively famous to the literally most Googled man on the planet in six months, that's what Tate did. He went from like, yeah, he should be on your show, to now we're flying to Madrid to have him on my show, Pat. And that's where, because Tate's message is a very powerful one, a very needed one. Mm -hmm. He's also no idiot, bro. Yeah. The guy's a good talker. He's, he's you know, you can walk the walk, but can yeah. you talk the talk? Yeah. That guy can talk the talk. He's a badass dude. Yeah. He's informed. He's maybe misunderstood, but everything that he has done, he has earned. It's like you. Yeah. You didn't just become a faith-made millionaire this year. You did 20 years in the Marines. You've been in insurance business for 20 years. You've had ups and downs like crazy. Married, divorced, kids, this, that, blah, 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 blah. You went through all that shit to be who you are today. So that's what people don't understand about Tate. It wasn't six months of social media that made yeah. him blow up. It was his father was a chess player. Yeah. He had that mentality. He had his brother that they're training. He had he was a kickboxer champion, yep. Yep. right? Started businesses, and that culminated with what you know today. Yep. But you know, you know, like the, the whole iceberg thing. Sure. People only see the tip of the iceberg yeah. success, but they don't see the late nights, perseverance, yeah. hard work, rejection, yeah. all that shit. So that that tale is true with Tate. Yeah. And he's a badass dude that's yeah. earned everything he's got. Yep. Uh, the good and the bad, right? I mean, he got canceled. I think that's a disgusting thing. But we all are part of YouTube. Mm -hmm. And it says the terms of service that none of us read. <laughs> you just click the box. <coughs> Keep it moving. Yeah. And they know what they're doing when they send, they send you an essay, you know, yeah. a fucking biography. Yeah. You're just, all right, keep it moving, accept. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not saying it's right. But these social media, digital governments, yeah. they control everything. Digital, good, good word. Let me ask you another question because uh, <laughs> another conversation that I thought was pretty brilliant was the interview that you guys had with, with AB, Antonio Brown. And uh, That was insane. Bro, you stepped up big time in that conversation. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking, how is this guy talking to Patrick you know, in this way? Even from the introduction. Yeah. From the introduction, it was already bad. And so... As I was watching this, you know, and Patrick was taking a breath or two. <laughs> I've never seen Pat frustrated like that. <laughs> Pat, coolest dude in the room, always. I, I, I seen him one never time like seen that. him frustrated like that. Yeah, another person from from Florida, another person from Florida. I seen him frustrated with, but uh, you you stepped up big time. Well, uh, how how are you processing this when your 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 host of the show is obviously having. Uh, uh, you know, this dialogue with AB and AB is not, you know, he's not yeah. indulging at one bit. So, so what was going through your head? So, um, what people don't know about that interview is we had already scheduled it for a couple days prior. Mm -hmm. AB flaked, what have you, whatever. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do it. Let's figure it out. We usually do podcasts in the morning. He, he didn't show up. And finally, it, we were going to do it at 9.30 at night. Mm -hmm. It's not a thing that we do. It's usually at 9 in the morning. He shows up at 9.28. I, I'll, I mean, I'll show you my phone. I text Pat two minutes before the show. I go, he's drunk. Wow. And Pat goes, yeah, I think so. And he also smelled like weed. I don't know. Okay. But penis, okay, so, yeah. he showed up just some type of way. And um, so he goes, yo, Liberty City in the house. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, what's up? Liberty City, where'd you go to high school? I mean, I, I knew peripherally. Yeah. He goes, Norland. I go, Norland, NMB, North Miami Beach. That's rivals. That's where I went. He goes, those are our rivals. I go, I know. I played football. I played football in college. I'm not some just chump-ass dude doing a pop. Like, I was a football player, right? So um, off top, he's like, oh, Miami, what's up? What's up? Like, so we kind of had a thing for a minute. Pre-show. Pre-show okay. for one minute. He's yeah. like, oh, who'd you play with? We named some names. Oh, straight. What's up? What's up? What's up? Pat's in a suit and tie. I think if we could do it all over again, we would have just kind of been in a jumpsuit, so, yeah, you know, because yeah, yeah. I was in a, a suit, Pat's in a suit. I think he just kind of assumed we were just like, you know, just yeah, business guys yeah. interviewing him. And at one point, 
you know, Pat was like, yo, I get it. You're from Liberty City. It's tough. I'm from Iran. Yeah, yeah you're right. Oh, okay? Right. Like, yeah. I get it. Like, maybe you have some, like, drive-by shootings, whatever. I have drive-by bombings. <laughs> like, 21 times a day. Like, <laughs> you know, like, the revolutions. So, like, with all due respect, but I don't think AB fully processed that. No. And um, was, I saw how angry, frustrated was Pat was getting, and I just kind of felt the need to just kind of be like, look, AB, yeah. Um, I don't think you know who you're talking to right no, here, bro. Obviously not. Like, this ain't some guy, some business guy, because he probably Googled him. Patrick McDavid worth X amount of $100 million. Oh, yeah, yeah. Successful business guy. What he doesn't know is that he grew up in Iran. Mm -hmm. He was in a, is in a, in a, um, Refugee camp. refugee camp in Germany, moved to L.A. His father was a, a, a oh, cashier. Oh, oh, in the a, burbs of L.A. Right. In <laughs> Glendale. And, like, just came from, from yeah. nothing. Was in the Army. Right. Had no money. Was just a regular dude. And I kind of had to reinforce that. And then I think where A.B. realized, I go, we've sat down with mobsters, Sammy the Bull, Michael Frances, racketeers, CIA guys, UFC fighters, Kobe, like, yeah, yeah. we've sat down with some badass people. literal yeah. and figurative killers. Yeah. So with all due respect, like, just recognize where you're at right now. And then when I think Pat, like, took off his yeah. headset, mm -hmm. there, was a, there was a point where, you know, there was, like, some uncomfortableness in the room. Yeah. And I think Pat's like, look, I've sat down with Shaq. Yeah. Ask Shaq about me. Yeah. You know, I've sat down with Kevin Hart. Ask Kevin Hart about me. Ask what we do here. We're not trying to get you, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think Pat just kind of calmed the he tensions. Diffused, diffused it, yeah. We kind of did a good cop, bad cop thing. Mm -hmm. And I know that a lot of people, I, don't, I tend not to read the comments, but I know there was a lot of good commentary yeah. in this thing. But at the end of the day, what you're going to get from me and even Pat is you're going to get realness. And we just kept it real with AB. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't, like, succumb to his bullshit. Yeah. And by the end of the interview, if you've never seen that, yeah. we were as, as friendly and as cool as possible well, smiling, to the point the interview was off. over. He's like, can I stay longer? And yeah. stayed another half hour just shooting the shit. Yeah. So you just kind of got to stick through those weird moments yeah. uh, for a good outcome. Yeah. And it turned out to be a dope interview. I think a lot of people learned. If, if you ever wanted to learn how to deal with a difficult guest, yeah. watch that interview. Oh, yeah. Watch that interview. So, so many lessons to be take, taken there. Um, give me some lessons you learned because I've, I've, had, the, I've had the benefit of, of earning some time being mentored by Patrick the last seven years. Yeah. My life has completely changed. I've, I've accomplished more in seven years than my, than my pre previous 14 um, what have you learned working side by side? Because I call him a once in a generation type of CEO. Yeah. He's a once in a generation type of founder. Um, the things that he's doing, you know, constantly growing, constantly evolving. What, what, what's some business lessons, maybe financial lessons, uh, you know, uh, father lessons, mm -hmm. man lessons? What, what's, well, if, you were to, if you were to put uh, a listicle of some of the top things you've learned working side by side with a once in a generation type of CEO like Patrick yeah. or David, what would you say? That's a good Those question. So I, I get this question all the time, like, what's it like working with Pat? Tell me about Pat. What's it like mm -hmm. working with Pat? Because everything, his reputation is who, what he's known for. It's mm -hmm. well earned. Yeah. He didn't luck out into this, much like mm -hmm. how you haven't lucked out into this or Tate hasn't lucked out into this. And I would say things like, you know, I've got really successful buddies, multi-millionaires, billionaire type buddies. Uh, but but maybe they're not like empathetic or maybe they don't get the common man, right? Or I have like really funny ass friends from the stand-up comedy world, but they don't know nothing about money <laughs> or leadership. Okay. Or I've got like really suave, good looking dudes, well dressed guys, but maybe they don't get just normal interactions with people. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people have, you know, things that they're really good at, but they're maybe lacking in something else. What I would say about Pat is that it's just like a checklist of all awesome things. He's successful, but he's humble. Like, he's cool, but he's funny, mm -hmm. right? He's well-dressed, but he can also be casual. He's a man, but he's also a good father. There's so many different things that he has. He's so well-rounded is, I think, what it comes down to. And when you see someone that's so good at everything, and I'm the type of person, I'm, I've always been good at what I've done, uh -huh. but I've never been great at any one thing, because I've never, mm -hmm. like, dedicated. Yep. And I see his level of dedication. Mm -hmm. I see how hard he works. And, like, once you become a millionaire, it's mm -hmm. easy to be like, 
take your foot off the gas. Yeah. And I see my CEO, who's worth X amount of hundreds of million, in the office early, doing content, leading. It's like, buddy, how can I not duplicate what he's doing, right? So I think more than anything, it's that he sets an example as a leader, not a boss. Because there's a difference between a boss and a leader. A leader is like, go do this. You go do this. It's kind of like um, hammer, 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 hammer. Mm -hmm. Where a leader is hammer, hammer, hug, right? And, they, and, they, and they'll do it themselves and set the example. So when you see a leader like that, it's kind of, it makes you, oh, you know how they say like, you can bring a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. drink. Yep. You can bring a talent to a show, but you can't make him work, right? Or yeah. you can bring a salesman to a company, but you can't make him sell. Ultimately, it has to come within. Everything has to come from within. And if you look at somebody who's more successful, has more followers, has more clout, has more money, all that, working harder than you, and you can't take something from that, what yeah. can you do? Yeah. So it is, at, at the end of the day, and, I, and Pat tells me all the time, the number one thing he wants to be known for is being a leader. On his tombstone, it's, it's it just wants word. it to be leader. One word. And yeah. I don't know what my one word is yet. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if it's leader, entertainer, you know, funny guy. Success. I don't know my word. Yeah. But he knows, he has clarity in that. And for me, I've always been, whether it's sports, always been a team player. Yeah. When you recognize that, that your coach is Phil Jackson yeah. and your teammate is Michael Jordan, buddy, I'll be Scottie Pippen all day long, baby. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, so yeah. I'm very fortunate. I'm yeah. grateful. I'm lucky. You know, people pay Pat 20, 30, $50,000 an hour, whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know his number, mm -hmm. but I know it's a stupid amount. Mm -hmm. And I get to sit next to him yeah. and he pays me, yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to shut up and listen from time to time. So I love Pat. Sick. I'm so excited that I get to be with Pat. And um, Sick, we've got two ears and one mouth for a reason. I do a lot of listening, even though I do some talking too. Uh, I'm very grateful. So and you're you. like what I am to Valuetainment mm. is what you are to PHP. Like I understand that, yeah. that, that mirror that we got I mean, going right now. Right, right. Right? right. So, you know, you were... Uh, player of the decade, what, what's your title in the front? Leader, leader, leader of the decade. Of the decade. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So I just want to put myself in a position to be that person at Valuetainment yeah. like you've done with PHP, yeah. bro. It's such a cool thing, man. That one word exercise that Patrick has you go through. When I did it, mine is difference maker. I guess there's a hyphen in there. Really? That. Difference maker. Tombstone. The one word maker. exercise. When you came across What is that? Tell I, me about that. I, I, uh, so what is Valuetainment known for? Capitalism. You know, free enterprise. Yeah. Right? Entrepreneurship, Entrepreneurship, for sure. Right? Uh, what's Seven Fear Squad known for? A millionaire, right? What's Matt known for? My, my tombstone. I hope I earn this. Difference maker. Sick. So that's the the, the one word. The one word exercise. So yeah. You're building a brand. You're building a company. You're building right. What, what is the one word? What like, is the I, one word you want to be known for? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. powerful. I, I, I'm in that phase right now. Of what do I want to be known for? I think everyone can kind of figure that out. What do you got? By the way, for those of you watching this right now, put it in the comment section below. I want I want to know what you're thinking. You've watched. Sauce Nick here. Yeah. What, what do you think is one word is? Please put it in the comment section below. <laughs> Tell me my one word. And then, right. Right, and then whoever we pick, man, you're going to get a special gift from the Money Smart Guy. Um, two, two last questions. That we, yeah, we, of course. We're going to that we got to catch a flight. I'm just curious. I'm eerily curious. If you guys don't know this. Adam doesn't own a car. <laughs> Uber's, Uber's everywhere. Uber's everywhere. Yeah. How much money? I'm ootering out of here in five <laughs> minutes. <laughs> How much money do you think you've saved by, by Ubering? Oh, dude. And not having a car payment, car insurance, So I'll gas. give you like the realistic number, but then also like the like um, worst case scenario or best case scenario oh. number. I haven't had a car. It's actually a crazy story. It's 2011. My, I, had a Mer I always wanted a Mercedes. I bought a Mercedes off my buddy in 2010. I said, I need the car to last two years. It had 100,000 miles on it. This is one of my best friends, my college roommate. I always liked his car. He goes, I'll give you a sick deal on it. I go, I need this to last two years. Because I knew it had 100,000 miles. One year it breaks down. I'm like, you sold me a lemon, bro. <laughs> that year, my, one of my best friends was that guy, Chris Humphreys. He married Kim, Kim, Kim Kardashian. Kardashian. I was a groomsman in the wedding. Really? No the, kidding. I've, I've relitigated this story a million times. I'll save you that whole thing. Um, and I had to basically spend the whole summer in L.A., like literally being a Kardashian. So my car broke down. I just was like so over it. I didn't need a car when I was in LA. I was getting 
chauffeured around. So I sold my car. When I came back to Miami, I said, how long can I go without buying a car? How long can I go? It's now 2022. It's been 11 years. I haven't had a car. I was living in downtown Miami. You, you know, you can Uber. You can, this is probably even pre-Uber 2011. I was taking little smart cars around, all that stuff. So the average American spends about all in, all in about 10 grand a year on car. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a hundred grand or so over the last 10 years, 10 years. But don't forget, like I've been in the nightlife business. I got a bar in South Beach. I party. There's a good chance in the last 10 years, I would have gotten a DUI. <laughs> There's just a good chance. Very good chance. I don't recommend it. Yeah, I don't yeah. think you should drink and drive. Yeah. But South Beach, party, yeah. young guy, bachelor. Bad mix. So what does that cost? What's the, what's the time opportunity, time value of money on? Yeah. It's going to cost you 10, 20 grand yeah. to deal with that's whatever your, that is. That's your risk assessment. Yeah. Risk yeah. assessment. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, like, I mean, go down yeah. everything with anything to do with a car, breakdown, accidents, DUI, all that. So I don't know, somewhere between probably 100 and 200 grand I've saved. And I've taken all that money. I've saved that. I pumped that into nice. all my accounts, my yeah. index funds, yeah. you know, Bitcoin, whatever. Yeah. And, you know, it's turned, made me a millionaire. I'm not a sure. faith-made millionaire. Yeah. Yeah. I'm but a, you're a millionaire. I'm a no-car uh, no payment <laughs> millionaire. Um, but I think ultimately, like, what's the message there is that everybody has the same big three expenses in their life to kind of give sure. this full circle. You got your housing, you got your transportation, and you got your food and beverage. Everyone has that. Got to live somewhere, you got to get around, you got to eat and drink some things. Yeah. And if you can find a way to limit or eliminate one of those big three expenses, you're going to get ahead. Right. So whether it's living at home for a little while, yeah. whether it's not having a car, whether that's not being a foodie and cooking mm -hmm. from home, whatever you can do, like all my boys own clubs, I own a bar and sell, like I've saved literally millions over the last 20 years partying in South Beach without having to buy bottles and drinks. How much is that up, sure. up to on a weekend? Yeah, that's right. 500 bucks yeah. times 500 weekends. So wherever you can kind of find ways to eliminate those things. And as you know, as you know, life gets more expensive as you get older. Mm -hmm. So if you can learn these things in your 20s, you know, by the time you're 30, by the time you're 40, I'm 40, by the time you get here, you've saved up a good amount. Now you can go get whatever car you want. Yeah. Or Uber wherever you want. So the, the jury is out, though, so as we wrap stuff up. Are you willing to take the next two basic expenses, which is wife and kids? <laughs> <laughs> That's next. Well, Adam Sostick, ever yeah. get married and have kids. Uh, That's for, that'll, be, that'll be the next show that we do, <laughs> talking wife and kids. Here's what I'll say about Matt. And, and what, what I, right now, you know, everyone always has to be improving. And I think that's one of Tate's biggest messages as I'm doing this. Right, self improvement is is so important, um, and constantly growing, um, but learning from everyone that I interview. So I'm developing my voice now. I'm talking more. You're doing an interview with me. Mm. Last time we did this, I was interviewing you. I'm developing my voice. So yep. developing yep. your voice. Yep. But um, I'm traditionally more of a question asker. Like I do a panel. All right, mm. boom, boom, boom. Like I'm directing traffic. Yeah, very good at it. Yep. I, 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 yeah. I, I know that I'm good at yeah. that, and I'm developing my voice, but. What I've recognized is that when I'm answer, asking these questions, I'm actively listening and I take something from everyone. You know, I think it was like Sir Isaac Newton that said, I've, I've learned what I am or I learned what I am because I've stood on the shoulders of giants. giants. Uh. And like for you, because I do my relationship dating show, mm. I'll never forget what you told me. I said, you work with your wife, Sheena, shout out to Sheena. My boo boo. My queen, my girl. <laughs> Um, I said, what's it like working with your wife, like the wife, the business partner? How do yeah. you turn it on, turn yeah. it off? And, and you said, you know, sometimes she wants to talk to me like, <laughs> like I'm one of her agents or whatever. Yeah. And you're like, nah, not me, baby. <laughs> and what you said was very powerful. And you said, if you want to talk to the fool in me, you'll get the fool. You want to talk to the king in me, you get the king. I'm like, 
That's the Paula, the king, baby. Talk to him like he's the king, Sheena. So I take things from everyone. I take things from Tate. I take things from Matt Sapala. I take things from PVD. I take things from Antonio Brown. I take things from all the politicians. And if you're not improving, if you're not learning, what does Pat always always say? Outwork, out strategize, out improve, outlast. I'm taking this stuff. So that's that that's my message. Just constantly self-improve, reinvent yourself. And save that money. I mean, what else is That's there? It. Save that money and make sure you subscribe to Adam Sostek on Instagram. And make sure you follow his Yeah, Valuetainment Money on, uh, on YouTube, Soz Talks Money on, on all social medias. And, uh, dude, I'm so proud of you, bro. Man, like, I'm proud of you, bro. I've seen your story, <laughs> the come up, the, the skinny little dude who's in the Marines, <laughs> to the... To, to rock to the new rock's little yeah. nephew type of th- I'd love never forget that <laughs> from Pitbull. Pit, did Pitbull call you that? <laughs> rock's little cousin. That was awesome, bro. It's cool. I, I just say I'm the target version. You know? The target version. <laughs> Save that money. Walmart version. Be said, I'd love to know your thoughts, your questions, your feedback. Please put it in the comment section below. And again, what do you think? Sostic, best response gets a gift from me. Please uh, check out the rest of this interview and go back to the beginning if you're just watching it just now. But uh, with that being said, if you watched this video and you haven't done so already, please consider hitting like. If you watched a couple of our episodes, if you haven't done so, please consider hitting subscribe and hit notifications. Don't consider hitting subscribe. Do subscribe. <laughs> Learn how to become a millionaire and a gangster ass pimp <laughs> marine man. Get some. To meet again. <laughs> to meet again. Continue to smart. Continue to smart. And be money smart today. Bye bye. 